All right, folks, welcome to Relvani. With us today, we have Donald Tari of, of Obituary right now. An honor meeting you and seeing you guys live for the first time. So how are you doing? We're doing very well. We're doing very well. You know, 25 shows into this 34-date tour mm -hmm. and uh, still having a blast. You know, it's almost a month into it, and most of the time, after four weeks, you start feeling run down. But uh, it's just a amazing lineup that is just fun to be a part of. A perfect package for fans. It really is. I mean, fans are very fortunate if we come to their town and they get a ticket to this because uh, it's... Uh, I heard it's been getting so loud majority of the time. Yeah, like tonight is going to be a sold-out show. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. So for you, in terms of what happened recently in, in Paris, did this kind of change uh, the sort of thinking in the band or like yeah. the entire group in general? Yeah, I mean, it does. You, you wouldn't be human if you would if it didn't affect you. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, what are you supposed to say? It's just a terrible, it's a terrible thing that happened. To stay focused on stage is a little bit different now because uh, you just, in the back of your mind, you mm -hmm. um, you know what happened in Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't just targeted to a metal a, yeah. a metal crowd. I mean, people people were having dinner and were murdered, um, and people were at a soccer uh, stadium. stadium. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about metal, metal music yeah. or music in general. It was just terror, terrorists, and they're, you know, they're just cowards, and they killed the innocent. So it's in the back of your mind. But we also know that, you know what, you can't allow fear to rule your life, life. Mm -hmm. and obituary just like carcass and just like napalm we knew the answer was not to pack our bags and, and, yeah. and run home and go hide in our closets mm -hmm. we knew that we had to uh just realize it's a terrible thing we hope that local promoters and the venues take extra precautions just to mm -hmm. be safe to keep the bands and the fans safe mm -hmm. and we know that we're here for a job we're here to let people enjoy themselves when they have a long week of work or they get off work that day to at least come for just a few hours and enjoy some music. And we know that's what we needed to do. Absolutely, because it was a little disappointing for fans that, that even Lamb of God had to cancel their tour. That's right. They had back home. So it was a concern that the remaining dates of this leg yeah. shouldn't be canceled because yeah. you, know, you guys are playing in France as well, which is amazing. That yeah. you, I think it was announced yesterday yeah. uh, that we are going to play that. So it's more like a, an... An open channel for fans to see you again. That's right. And, and again, man, they deserve they deserve to see this this show. We we just keep our fingers crossed, and and we just hope that everything's going to be okay, mm -hmm. and we're going to be safe because nowhere on this planet is safe right yeah, now. It's no not way. it's not like it's not like Paris is is more dangerous than anywhere else. You know, nobody's safe, but you just have to move on with life, mm -hmm. and you got to just hope that you're going to be okay and go and go on about your business. Absolutely right. And in terms of uh, the crowd interaction as well, what differences do you find when you come to Europe in terms of you know, other than playing home in states? Yeah, you know, it's just amazing because you know the, the European fans are diehards. They love their metal, and they come out. They come out of the woodworks, especially for this show, and I can't blame them because it is an amazing package and an amazing lineup. But uh, you know, it's not that much different than back at home. You know, mm -hmm. America is very spread out, so it's much harder to get the big crowds to show up. Um, here, in general, there's a lot of trains and and systems that they can jump on and come yeah. see shows. And for instance, in Florida, where we're from, there's no you're not jumping on a subway or a train to come to mm -hmm. see a show. So that's part of the barriers and the, the the obstacles that fans in the u.s have but uh here it's just been great it's just been sold out nights and uh the fans are really really enjoying this this package. that's amazing i had a look at the set list a while ago and you guys are playing you know from slowly we rot to ink and blood yeah you have a perfect combination i think it's around 40 to 45 minutes 45 set? minutes yeah yes, for obituary yes yeah, so yeah. Uh, how you know how do you plan your does it change uh, or it oh, it was stays. so hard. It's so hard to to pick a set list for only forty five minutes because yeah. it's it's really only ten songs, maybe eleven mm, in forty five minutes, maybe. Mm. And we have nearly ten albums, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could we can't look at that. We just we just said, you know what? Let's put a classic set list together of old stuff and some new stuff, and really just knock people's socks off with the best set list we can think of. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did, and that's the set list we're happy with, and uh, and we are we, we love the songs that we're playing for the fans on this tour. That's amazing. Your sound in general is, is just not about those blast beats and, and rapid-fire stuff. It's about right. the grooves right. that makes Obituary, you know, one of yeah. the, you know, 
the, the, the death metal band. So yeah. has it ever been a, a thought process to, let's say, you know, let fuck everything, let's go? No, you know, you know the, I think that's the beauty of obituaries. We yeah. don't we don't think too much about that. We don't worry about what other bands are doing yeah. around us. We don't we don't care that we don't do blast beats. We're not the fastest band in the world, and we're okay with that. Mm-hmm. We we stick with what we're. I think we're pretty good at, and uh, we'll we'll let all the other bands on the planet do blast beats. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So in, in terms of how the sound has progressed from the executioner to how it's been to darkest days and now to Inked in blood, it's it's more or less been like that consistent in yeah. terms of you know the the aggression and the the, yeah. the groovy nature of obituary's music has it been like a thought process to continue that down the road or maybe experiment a little bit here and there i don't know about down the road you know we, we we're open to trying new things but again i you know we're obituary is more important than just the band members we yeah. know that there's fans around this world that we we don't want to change what we have going on here we got something good and our fans love that why change something? I mean, why, why experiment with something so important to fans? You know, and uh, you know, the, it is, it, it is. It's just a, a s- simple songwriting idea in our brain, and, and we stick with that, and, and we love it. We love easy, mid-tempo, groovy songs that you can remember when the song is finished. You can still hum the riff, and uh, right. some some bands on this planet, it's it's tough to hum a, a riff after listening to an entire album. <laughs> That's right. And it's been more than a year since Ink and Blood is out. Has been any sort of progress further? Maybe some songwriting ideas? On yeah, we're, we're always, anytime we're at the studio, we're always coming up with ideas and riffs and putting them away, recording them real quick and just putting them in our back pocket for the mm-hmm. for the future. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, Ink and Blood's still very young. Yeah. You know, one year is nothing. You know, we're, we're going to tour for probably another calendar year to, mm-hmm. on this album and, and go see every corner of the planet that mm-hmm. we're... Uh, that we're allowed to go and we want to go safely and uh, and really push Ink and Blood. And then, of course, the future is extremely exciting and, and bright for us because the lineup now with Terry and Ken in the band, it's just we're having a blast. We're having more fun than we've ever had. And songwriting, I, I actually can't wait to involve these guys to bring some ideas to us and, and help us mold even better songs than what we already had That's done. amazing. You guys broke the... You know, it was insane when the crowdfunding campaign came in and it just got like yeah. bang on. Is there any sort of plans to do something of that sort again? Or? I don't know. I don't think so. It, the, was that kind of a hectic for you guys? It to, sucked. Yeah. It was It was amazing that we raised money and it was great that we were able to fund the record that way. But the the reality of having to package 925 yeah, to deliver them <laughs> and trying to finish the record at the same time and preparing for the American tour and everything it just it was a lot for the band members and uh i'm i'm speaking for the band where i'm i'm guessing we're not going to try that ever again (laughs) (laughs) okay and how important does the band feel about you know let's say because there was a five-year gap between the previous one and inkton blood so now that the bands who started way back in 80s are trying to you know tour more you know release album after three years or four years is that something you guys plan to or it just comes out naturally. Yeah, you know what? Again, we don't think too much about it. If it's five years, it's five years. We didn't intend for it to be that long. Yeah. But um, at this point right now, man, Ink and Blood's doing well. The fans are loving it. We're very busy. We are. We have in demand right now. So we're going to do festivals coming up this summer. And, and, and we'll always write songs and get them ready for the next release. But we don't know when that's going to be. And we're not in a hurry. Right, for God's right. sakes, we're not in a hurry. That's amazing because in terms of the, the fan response of sales has been extremely good for Rington Blood as compared to the previous one. So right. that gives you more room to tour different yeah. countries and play. Yeah, that's right. And and again, we're not in a hurry. You know, some bands might feel committed to put an album out every year and a half mm-hmm. or two years and we're we we we're not. You know, we we've we don't we have nothing left to prove. We've done it and we're having a good time. So when we start writing we're gonna take our time with the writing process and we're just gonna enjoy ourselves on, on writing this next record. That's amazing. And you know, it was wonderful to see the video which came out with all of you know, all you guys with that <laughs> insanity what happened in that two and a half minutes. <laughs> oh, whose idea was it? Because it was brilliantly executed. Yeah, you know, it was uh um Balaj is the cartoonist that came to us and he he made a little thirty second clip of a cartoon using one of the new songs just to show us he said here's an idea and um we knew it was a very cool idea but it, but he didn't it wasn't exactly what we wanted when it comes to the concept so we said we love your art we love how the cartoon is but this is what we want we 
he was trying to go more dark and bloody and gory, <laughs> and and it was our idea to say, no, you it, you have it wrong here. We want it to be happy, silly, and stupid, <laughs> and uh, and and that's the we mixed his his ideas with ours, and uh, and of course we came up with the. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's wonderful. You know, recently, you know, heavy metal fans or obituary in general, you know, Frank left. Uh, so, has that sort of been very uh, disturbing? And you know, a brother in the band is, yeah. is no more with us. Yeah, you know, it just it's sad. There, you know, it it it's a it's a proven fact that we're only on the planet for a certain sure, amount of okay. days, mm -hmm. and you don't know how many days that is. So you live life um, as well as you can and have fun while you can. That's the way I see things. And uh, you know, we hope that his uh, his children and his wife are are going to be all right. And um, and you know, you got to again, you just have to take one day at a time and yeah, enjoy yourself it. on this planet. You know. It's, there's there's not time to be grumpy and miserable on this on this planet. I don't think for for me anyway. Right, right. And you know all these festivals happen. Like you said, you will be playing many of the festivals in Europe. Down the road, maybe two years, three years down the road, when there's no more priest and no more maiden touring, which bands do you feel have that in them who get to headline the festivals? Jeez, I don't know. Obituary, hopefully. I would love <laughs> to see that. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Who would have guessed that you know um, that obituary is even still doing what we're doing and and carcasses as big as they are right now yeah. they're they're amazing and and to to know how long they were away from the scene and to come back with such an amazing record and to have such just such power right now mm -hmm. uh, you know fans are loving them and and they're showing up to their shows like crazy and you know obituary is in that same we're in that same boat you know we're Turn, we're becoming that legendary status, status. I guess, because mm -hmm. it's simply how many years you've been around as a band, and uh, who knows? I mean, we're we are not afraid to uh, to keep going and have a good time doing what 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 we're doing. Awesome. In terms of touring, do you have any plans? Because we, it's like a new trend in the market where fans are voting for bands to visit specific cities which they haven't covered in the past. So more the number of votes come in, then it's it's more like. The, the crowdfunding yeah. stuff, but more like on the touring basis. That's right, a little voting and, and process. This seems to have worked for the band uh, Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah. They did, I think, around 1.6 million responses came yeah. in, and then they toured the different cities in That's North America. Great. So something which hey, you know, can be tried down the line to absolutely. visit Why areas which you haven't we seen would, before. We, we're, we're down with any kind of cool idea and different thoughts and getting fans to talk about it and getting them excited. And the ones that are truly begging us and the, the most votes... They would, they should deserve a, a concert if if we if we can financially uh, afford to go and play that country. There's no question. I think that's a great idea. Wonderful. And and how disappointed we have fans back home in India who could not see you, yeah. you know, come over there and play in yeah. spite of different attempts yeah. by by people out there. It just didn't happen. So. I don't know when is that going to happen that you guys come and play. Hopefully soon. There, you know, for your fans. Uh, I, hopefully soon, you know. Marcus came in January. Yeah. They played there. Awesome. It was uh, unexpected and the response was amazing. That's great. And I mean, Napalm had come yeah. the previous year, so be sure he's. Yeah, deep. we're due. That's... <laughs> you know, we're ready. We just we, we the time's got to be right and the. Um, but the... it gets difficult because just for one show you would have to come. Oh, it's 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 that's, that's... The, yeah, the the logistics of going there for a show is tremendous, and the expense is just it's a it, it's it's a big it's a big production, a big process to try and get a band to go to India for a show. But um, you know, never say never because India is a there's a lot of people and there's a lot of metalheads, and they deserve to see Obituary live. And uh, we would we would hopefully one day love to to uh to visit there and be uh welcome and, and come play some metal for them. That's you know I don't know we're we're having a blast um, uh, right now I I feel great and my drumming's more powerful yeah. and faster than ever than I've been and uh and we're just having a blast. You guys have your own studio so that makes it easier for you to go chip in play. That's right. Makes it it's so it's so fun. We're so lucky that we can do something like that and and we're and we're using it to our advantage. You know we're writing new riffs and we're putting them away for the future and we're. Pr preparing and thinking about what the next release sound will sound like mm -hmm. and uh but again we're not in a hurry for the next mm -hmm. actual release we're, we're still having a blast with this album and we're going to go tour every corner of the planet that we can perfect so thanks great it's been an Glad honor you're here. to chat with you and i look forward to see you guys today that's great it